Tricuspid regurgitation is characterized by the backflow of blood into the right atrium during systole. The tricuspid valve, it's an atrioventricular valve which prevents blood from flowing from the right ventricle to the right atrium. The other atrioventricular valve is the mitral valve. Anatomically, the tricuspid valve consists of three leaflets, so tri as in three, anterior, septal, and posterior leaflets. The tricuspid and mitral valves are supported by the attachment of fibrous cords, chordae, tendinae, and papillary muscles, which are located on the interior surface of the ventricles. During ventricular systole, the papillary muscles contract, causing the tricuspid and mitral valves to close, preventing blood to flow to the atrium and allowing blood to flow to the pulmonary artery and the aorta. In diastole, the papillary muscles relax, the tricuspid and mitral valves are open, allowing blood to fill the ventricles. So tricuspid regurgitation is characterized by a problem when you have backflow of blood into the right atrium during systole. Tricuspid regurgitation can be classified as either being primary or secondary. Secondary is also known as functional tricuspid regurgitation and is a more common cause. So let's look at primary tricuspid regurgitation and the different causes. Primary tricuspid regurgitation is less common. Causes include blunt chest trauma, carcinoid syndrome, and this is where you have presence of a carcinoid tumor, which has a very close association with tricuspid valve disease. Characteristic features of this syndrome include cutaneous flushing, abdominal cramps, and diarrhea. Drugs. There is an association between tricuspid regurgitation and combined use of anorectic drugs, such as ergotamine or uh, phenteramine. Epstein anomaly is another cause of tricuspid regurgitation. It is the most common congenital disease involving the tricuspid valve. Here you have downward displacement of a congenitally malformed tricuspid cusp into the right ventricle. The iatrogenic causes include pacemaker leads that cross the tricuspid valve. Myxomatous degeneration associated with tricuspid valve prolapse, which occurs in as many as 40% of patients with prolapse of the mitral valve. Valvular abnormalities caused by infective endocarditis in users of, say, IV drug use. This is where you have presence of vegetation caused by bacteria such as Staphylococcus aureus. Rheumatic fever is another important cause which leads to rheumatic heart disease at times. And in rheumatic heart disease, what happens is you have streptococcus pyogenes, which causes the initial uh, acute infection. This then creates antibodies, which unfortunately um, share some molecular similarities to the heart valves. And so as a response, you get cross-reactivity and damage to the heart valves themselves. Marfan syndrome is another uh, cause of primary tricuspid regurgitation. Secondary tricuspid regurgitation is more common. It is a functional problem and is due to dilatation of the right atrium and right ventricle with dilation of the tricuspid annulus. These changes are often caused by pulmonary hypertension. Imagine when you have increased pressure in the pulmonary arteries. This increases pressure in the right ventricle, leading to right ventricle dil dilation and right atrial dilation. Disorders that causes pulmonary hypertension and secondary right ventricular dilatation include left-sided heart failure, 
mitral stenosis or regurgitation, both of these will cause pulmonary hypertension. Primary pulmonary diseases, including core pulmonale, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary fibrosis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, each of these causes can lead to pulmonary hypertension. Left to right shunt is another cause of tricuspid regurgitation due to increase in pressure to the right ventricle. This includes atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect. Eisenmenger syndrome is another cause. Stenosis of the pulmonic valve or the pulmonary artery. And lastly, hyperthyroidism. These different causes of tricuspid regurgitation will either cause mild, moderate, or severe tricuspid regurgitation eventually. The different mechanisms of injury that lead to tricuspid regurgitation can include increased pressures and dilation of the right ventricle and then the right atrium. The atrium is actually relatively compliant, and so there are not many major hemodynamic changes with mild to moderate tricuspid regurgitation. However, in severe tricuspid regurgitation, there are obvious signs and symptoms of right-sided heart failure because the right side of the heart is unable to eject enough blood out. Right-sided heart failure leads to fluid overload, which results in the cardinal signs of severe tricuspid regurgitation. So in the clinical manifestation of tricuspid regurgitation, mild to moderate tricuspid regurgitation usually have minimal symptoms. Severe tricuspid regurgitation is when you start developing symptoms of right-sided heart failure, fatigue, shortness of breath, and reduced exercise tolerance. On examination, the person can be cachectic and short of breath. They can have peripheral cyanosis due to poor oxygenation, a raised jugular venous pressure, a pulsatile jugular vein with giant V waves, which indicate ventricular problem. Precordial examination reveals a right ventricular heave due to a dilated big right ventricle. A hollow systolic murmur at the lower left sternal border. This murmur is louder by venous return. So, so during inspiration, for example, or when you raise the leg, it increases the murmur. It becomes louder. Other things to be found on examination include hepatomegaly from congestion, ascites, and peripheral edema. Occasionally jaundice reflecting hepatic dysfunction. A pulsatile liver is, uh, can occur in severe tricuspid regurgitation. Investigations include an ECG, which may show some form of arrhythmia, such as atrial fibrillation, due to the dilated atrium. Other features can include right ventricular uh, hypertrophy and right axis deviation. Chest x-ray is usually normal, but you can have cardiomegaly and pleural effusion. Echocardiogram. Echocardiogram is the main diagnostic tool for identification of TR, as well as to class the severity, mild, moderate, severe. A cardiac MRI can also be used if an echocardiogram is suboptimal. Cardiac catheterization is indicated for accurate measurement of pulmonary pressures, as well as evaluating for you know, coronary anatomy when surgery is indicated. The treatment of tricuspid regurgitation involves treating the underlying cause, treating heart failure, which includes loop diuretics and aldosterone. Surgical options include valve repair or tricuspid valve replacement. Valve repair involves annuloplasty, which is when the tricuspid valve annulus is sutured to a prosthetic ring or a tailored reduction in annulus circumferential size is done. A valve replacement, uh, as the name suggests, is really replacing the whole valve with a synthetic one, for example. 
And in this, you would need to be anticoagulated for some time. Surgical options for tricuspid regurgitation are indicated when tricuspid regurgitation is very severe as well as symptomatic. Aside from open heart surgery, there are now transcatheter options that are available. These also can perform annuloplasty, tricuspid valve replacement, as well as coaptation devices for the tricuspid valve. So in summary, tricuspid regurgitation is characterized by backflow of blood into the right atrium during systole. Tricuspid regurgitation can be categorized into two groups, primary tricuspid regurgitation, which is a problem in the tricuspid leaflet, and then secondary tricuspid regurgitation, which is a problem with the tricuspid annulus with associated right ventricular dilatation as well as right atrial dilatation. Management involves treating the underlying cause, treating heart failure, as well as surgical and transcatheter options for valvular repair and replacement. Thank you for watching.